Hello again, it's me, Mr. Midshipman, and this is my um, clutch lever on my Suzuki GSX R600. And this here's my everyday carry, so it's right here with me in case somebody wants to come around and horse them around. But why are we going to replace this? Look at it. That's what I wanted to show you. See how it goes up and down? So I figured I'd show you that before I replace it. Not only does it go this way, but it's got all this slop. You might have the same thing. So, uh, yeah, you got to take this apart completely. And here's the bolts. Right? Two of these, they're two different size. They appear to be 5 millimeter. I mic them with my uh, vinyl calipers. And I'm coming up with about... Uh, 37 millimeter for this one which is probably then 40 and 23 millimeter for this one which would be 25 and the 5m because this here's a 6m in case you want to replace it with these sock cap stainless steel because these aren't stainless steel and people tend to strip them out and also you got to turn the handlebars this way you know all the way up to the uh, to the right there to get the, uh, the screwdriver up inside through the front uh, cowl there. So there you go with that. So if you want to order these screws, dropped one on the floor already. If you want to order these before you start this project, I would. It's good to tell people that, you know. So what we did, we took this apart, right? We took the cable out and also at this time You'd be surprised how nasty that cable is. Might be a good idea just to order one of them before you start too. So, I don't know. See, they make different kinds of levers. And, uh, I don't know. Did you ever watch that uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or even better, Slumdog Millionaire? Like where you have to answer the question. So... I'm looking at these short ones. See, you're going like, you know, Slumdog Millionaire. You go, well, we figure they're making them things because people want them. You know how you answer that question. You know what I'm saying, yeah. So you come to the realization maybe they're making them short because that's what people want. And they seem to be pretty nice. They come from China, and this looks like plastic, but it's billet. And now look how tight they are, see? See, they don't wobble at all, not like this shit. This is really na nasty. So, these are freaking cheap. And I want to tell you something else. Don't get these gold anodized ones. Yeah, when you're in the sports bikes, it's different than Harley Davidson's. You don't want to turn into one of those, I don't know what his name, Ricky Lake or something. It's just too weird, you know. You should, I should have just got black ones, is what I'm saying, or silver ones. See, I got the gold ones because I figured these were silver. And also, the forks are silver, are gold right here. So it's not that bad, but you don't want to put too much, you know, that colored anodizing on your bike or you look like some kind of fag or something, you know. Best just to keep it like uh, the color that it was. And I also found out all these aftermarket products. I'll show you then. I'll do a list of all the aftermarket products I wasted my money on. They're mostly all junk. They are all junk, not mostly. This uh, is the only one aftermarket product that's not junk. So far, anyway, we didn't use it and have it break. So, now to take this off. Now there's the... Uh, turn this in all the way here. And then you can just take the cable. First you gotta take this off right here, your switch. Take the grip off. You know, that you can see. Another thing people didn't see, it looks like it's like a rubber glue or maybe even contact cement that wasn't used in the contact mode. Just put the contact cement on and put it on. So now you know what's under there when you take that off too. Some people wanna see that and go, oh geez, that's what we're in for. So you wanna slide like a bar underneath there. Keep sliding it in until they it breaks loose and it comes off pretty slick. Also, like I said, those aftermarket grips are all junk too. So I'm putting the stock ones back on. They're pretty rubbery. They're 
like sponge rubber and they're relatively cheap they have bar ends also the aftermarket bar ends are junk you want to get the original bar ends they're steel also I was going to get the bar ends because mine are scratched for when he fell but you know what you can sand them scratches out with that dual action sander I got also now to take this off the brake lever it's from when he fell I think he bent this widened it and you could probably hammer it back together again but I bought the whole unit here you can see the junkyard part number on it see 20 bucks for that whole piece right there it also is electrically connected to the whatever that is the turn signal passing switch and light switch and all that goofy stuff yep and also I'm using what's called eight millimeter green these Chinese wrenches and this eight quarter millimeter Chinese from Harbor Freight and this is the set they give you all color coded nice big numbers that you can read so yeah we know the greens eight if they use them a while you'll just know the green is eight millimeters see but you know what when you pick a set of these up get rid of them because these plastic posts they sell a uh, metal one for 99 cents which is far superior than this yes and then you're good to go then you just have to cut it off because it's like two feet long or something so then you make sure you turn it uh, that would be counterclockwise always counterclockwise those people with the left and right stuff I never heard of a circle that goes left or right to you I just don't understand you that's what it is we have a uh, communication breakdown isn't that what Led Zeppelin calls it no. So, whatever you're trying to tell me, I don't understand a word you say. You have to come around in my way of thinking. Which is better? What do you think? Counterclockwise or left to right? Hmm. See? See what I mean? And also, when I was in school, the kids used to talk to me out in the hall. They only have a few minutes. They'd say, you know, I don't understand a word he says. If it wouldn't be for you, I wouldn't know what the hell we're doing. And they were really smart kids, too. And enough of them told me that to guess what? I knew I was in trouble, and yes, I was, you know, I think it has to do with, see, now that won't come off past that garbage, see, you can take just the regular screwdriver, break that open a little bit, and it'll come right down, don't force anything ever, if you're forcing it, there's something wrong, and there's something wrong with people that force it, and I forgot to tell you, I pulled this off, because you know I'm just doing it it's hard for me doing making videos and stuff most people get that from just watching me here look it's got this little metal spring thing that clicks on these grooves so it doesn't go out I mean it's just far superior <laughs> and, and this is probably an actuator with the clutch This has a special clutch in it for people that don't know how to shift too good. It's almost impossible. It's almost like an automatic clutch. I mean, it's a real clutch, but uh, if you're drag racing or something, then you want to take it out. But we're not going to do that. So you want to just stick all OME parts, original equipment manufactured parts. Also, like I uh, used acetone to take this off. Right here, in case you don't believe me. Maybe lacquer thinner works too, but I know acetone works on everything. Make sure you put the lid on. And also, you know, my everyday carry knife is razor blade right here because there's a big blob right underneath there. And watch how slick the razor blade just, just takes that off. See it? That's what it was hanging up on anyway. If I would have just removed that blob and acetone at first, I wouldn't have had to spread it with the screwdriver. So, you know, that's another way you could have done it. Yep. It's not a matter of whether I'm showing you the ultimate way to do it or anything. I'm just showing you that in my world, everything is all related to everything. It's all part of everything. Okay, before you put it on the bar in and put in a little drop, not even a drop of Loctite in that hole. Okay. 
let's put this actuator on and I believe this thing slides up in to this position here see oh yeah it slides right into this thing first see that trough there and that's the lock it in and then you can put this in see and you need a small medium screwdriver not number two see how nice that fits in if you use the right size then you don't have all this don't force it see then you have a nice looking head at this point you can slip it on there all the way and get your 10 millimeter or at the same time make sure you put oil in this thing right here so it slides around what I'm going to put in is this number seven grease which I, I swear by old Dow Corning number seven silicone we just put some of that right in there because if you don't the cable will start to lock up on these sharp right here and then it will turn while you're trying to tighten it okay yep. so that's about it probably something else I forgot to tell you but now you can slide that all the way up see turn this socket or any kind of wrench wouldn't think you need an impact wrench though see what happens when you're talking can't think at the same time. Leave it a little loose, but not so loose that it slides off. Same. Then uh, now you can put the cable on. Usually you'll see like when they tell you to put stuff together, they say put it together the same way you took it apart and make sure all this that slot there is all lined up. Slam that thing all the way home. And you'll see it'll be tight, it's hard to tight if you didn't put that lube in there. It'll get caught up and then the cable will get into that slot like. And there we go, we already got a nice clutch. And look how much it vibrates now. None. Remember how sloppy it was when I took it off? Damn straight. Now at this point, we put uh, the old number seven in here too and I wanted to show you right here there's this pin right there see it that pin there has to go into the bottom of this handlebar that's why you slide this lever all the way up because then you can slide it back to, to you know tight with this but yeah that pin and then you can see I put that number seven silicone grease and all the electronics and switches in here so they, uh, I don't know, I've had trouble with switches freezing up because they're not lubricated. So you just keep turning it like that till she locks. And then you can put these screws in. The long one goes towards the handlebars. At the same time, maybe this stubby here will work. Nope, it don't. So you have to turn the handlebars. See? To the... Right there. I'll keep turning them. And now it fell out of that pin. Yep, so you'll have that problem. It only happens when you're on camera that it happens. And put these screws in very gently. There's no need to uh, get all worked up about them. And then put this one in this side here. Take one of these stubbies. Well, you could actually use that other screwdriver I used. I'm just trying the stubby. See if it works. It does. 
you don't need one. This whole set of screwdrivers I got, I think, like seven screwdrivers at Harbor Freight for free. But that's only because they're only two bucks for the whole set. Yeah, because I do everything, remember, very lovingly and caressingly. I don't go snapping bolts. If you notice what that other Nimrod did when he lost all the parts. We don't really do all that super stuff. There, and that's in there. And at this point, you can, like I said, bring this back again. Okay. tighten that because you want to sit on the bike in the tight and move it up and down so it's perfect but look at that two fingers I can't no you can't see but see let me show you this short little thing is so slick see two 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 my uh, motor noise you know air guitar thing you know right so now we got all that stuff in there silicone grease so we're not going to worry about them getting all filled with water now you want to know how to put this hand grip on I just slip it on no you don't no you don't okay first thing I do is I put some of this acid on, on a rag and try to wipe all that gooey stuff off. But this is really the only way to do it, man. Ooh, who wants frizzy hair? And just put that on there, which is called, um, I believe they call it hairspray for women. Back in the 50s, like, I don't know if they use it today. Put some hairspray on there. Put some hairspray down in here. I mean, they'll tell you all different ways of doing it, but hairspray is really the only way. Because now you lubricated it, and she slides right on there. Isn't that slick? Look at that. And when it hardens up, it will come off again. See, you don't have to worry about this goofy twisting. Everything is perfect, like, see, it's on there nice. And man, I'm telling you, that's all there is to it. Some fine tuning of the clutch here. Because we got that grease in the threads, it's really easy to turn. And we want some play because if you do, you might have the clutch hanging up while you're riding around with the clutch engaged, you know. So look at that. Look how much wobble we have. See? About zilch. And that's because of this adjustable thing here. See? Which is nice. Which the other one didn't have. So, there you go. That's how you do it. Oh, you gotta stick the bar end in. But, uh, we were finishing the bar end now, and we have to wait a week for it to dry. Alright, see this bar end? This is the stock one. It's steel, it's all scratched up, and you're going to go, geez, I need to get new ones. A lot of people do. You'll see them for sale online, these used ones. And they want about 10 bucks a piece for ones worse shaped than this, with the screw all stripped. Yep. So, uh... You're going to go out and buy a set of these, and you'll see there's no holes here, where there is holes here, see? See the hole? Real close, too. So, I had to drill holes into this one, see? Real close there with a freaking drill press. It's really a nasty job. You don't want to really do that. 
Also, these rubbers were bigger, you know, fatter. So you had to grind them down on a belt on a belt sander, and uh, it became really laborious. But they fit. But still, they're not as strong as these. These here are weighted, real heavy, like a paperweight. I think the purpose of them is Suzuki put them on there. They're called like anti-vibrating bar ends. Yeah, because I've seen the other ones for sale. The used ones and the worse than these. So I'm going to sell mine out if they're selling theirs. I sent you wasting money, right? Which I did already. So you got to chop this up. It's a bad investment, you know? Like uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, which not nowhere bad as that. So, like I said, everything's all right thing. So let's think it's just Freddie, Freddie Mac here, you know? The Freddie Mac school uh, system. See, it's all the same. That's what these represent. A bad investment. So it's time to just throw it away and start from scratch with the new stuff and fix the old way. The old way is the best way. So now we got one glove. I do a lot of that when I lose the other glove. Just for the break. Also, you want to use another skirt for that. If you were doing it for something that's that keeps that corner almost like um, turning it on a lathe, you know? So it's nice and consistent. See that? Well, that's working out. So there it is. Uh, instead of buying a $30 bar in, I refinished this one, you see, and it's actually better than new again. See, you can count the hairs on my hand there, Leonard. Remember how hacked up it was before? Yeah, there's no sense in going out and buying one for $35. Not when it's minus 30 out. So now we're going to paint it with this stuff here. But again, we can't leave it polished like that. We gotta sand it with at least 400, and I prefer like 320. Wow, this is good stuff. Now we can see that this was not done professionally. And that's too big a screwdriver, but it didn't strip the Allen screw out. I mean, not Allen, Phillips. <laughs> Philip Allen. I'm laughing because how you can get confused with all this crazy stuff. It doesn't matter. You just got to know what you're doing. Looks like you put Loctite in there. So you can see it was a home job. But look what he did here. Do you notice? He bent the ear down. Which is almost lucky he didn't crack it. See how he bent that down? He tightened this so tight. Like I said, I just... I told you before, don't force anything. Man, that's nasty. It is. And now we're going to see exactly what he did wrong. <laughs> Not me. I'm fixing all your mistakes. Because it's the way you wanted it. Right? Look at that. It's all chewed up. He didn't put the bushing in there. There's a bushing in there. And anyway, like I told you, I took the belt sander because the bushing, when I laid it flat, I don't know if you can see that, but I laid it flat on here. You could see the bushing sticking up just a hair. So I took it on the belt sander and just zit, zit, zit. And then I put it together again and clamped it. But I think, yep, look, see? He even bent that bolt. He tightened it so much. See how it's bent? <laughs> Isn't that good stuff? Come on. It's like I was watching this movie with Hickok 45. I think he's a school teacher, you know? Come on, Hickok45, you can see where the whole class hates my guts. And you know what? I also went to that class, too, and they said, Whose fault is it? It's your fault. Their fault. It's your fault. Not my fault. It's their fault. So it is.
You're not going to blame me for that. Now here's my job. Look at that. See, and I even put some oil on it. There's nothing bent. Just use parts. Put this on there and there nice. Got it all oiled so it won't gall. But this is beyond galling. Look at that. It's like retarded. So I'm basically going to call everybody retarded now. You know, if you're not a subscriber of my channel, then you're basically a retard like Justin Bieber. Like I told you, he was going to be put in jail too. Oh no, you're... Remember all the name calling you called me? Sticking up for Justin Bieber. Why don't you start worrying about yourself than Justin Bieber? Yep. Why don't I have a lot of subscribers again? Because it's their fault. Okay. Also, this... See why that's wobbling like that? Do you know why that is? It's, a, it's another problem. See this? Uh, is that called a Phillips? I'm not sure. No, that's Allen. Okay, so <laughs> you can keep confused. Anyway, the reason why you can't tighten that up is because at the factory, that's actually a 7.5 millimeter nut. It's also the aircraft nut, see? But look. When you turn that, see, you can't hold that with a wrench because eight millimeters too big, see? And just take my word for it, seven millimeter, if I can find it, it's too small. So, you have to get an eight millimeter and you can't put an adjustable on there because it just will not fit down. See how close that is? It just won't fit down on there to catch. You actually need a real 7.5 millimeter wrench. And they didn't have it at the factory, so they couldn't tighten them, my friend. Do you understand now? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. And these here, you can replace these with stainless steel Phillips. Now, Alan, I'm just messing with you. You know that. See, that's to tighten up the clamp. So we adjust it. So and then you want to put oil right in here, or it's gonna like you're gonna go, hey, it's caught and it won't turn, and the whole cable's like one like this. This is the cable, the cable's going. That's why, because the cable isn't slipping inside there, it's getting hooked up on this slot that they milled out. That's why it is, my friend. It's the way it goes. No, I bought all my own tools and I bought everything else. Now, you could, instead of doing what Nimrod did here, right, you could take this and stick a washer in it like so, if it's that wobbly in there, and build it up with a shim, shimming up it's called, see, and then you don't have to force things. But look, even as goofy as that is, I can still get a washer in there, I think. He really clamped that sucker together, see? <laughs> you people are something else. So they really, don't worry about it. America's doomed. And it don't matter how much you talk this game, whose fault is it again? Your fault. So, if you're not a subscriber of mine, then it's your fault. It's what they taught me in school. Again, in class, whose fault is it? It's their fault. Certainly, you can see I proved it more beyond a reasonable doubt. 